It has been to the top of the mountain. This is the Asus G550J, and this is not just any one. This is one of the ones that was up on the top of the mountain, breaking the world record for the highest mountaintop or the highest terrestrial land party. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the one we were using up there, right here. So we tried a lot of laptops with Doom, and this is really the only one that could handle those crazy graphics. But in all seriousness, this does have the Intel i7-4710. That's the brand new quad-core CPU from Intel, uh, fourth generation. And uh, then it also has a 750 gigabyte hard drive. It's HGST uh, branded. That's a mechanical hard drive, 7200 RPM, like I said. It's got eight gigabytes of memory running at 1600 megahertz. This one's also running the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 850M. So whenever you need the extra power, that one will turn on. And uh, by default, while you're just hanging out windows and stuff to save battery life, that'll turn off and you'll just use the onboard graphics from Intel. So the GTX 850M, we did some benchmarks and that's gonna be later in the video to let you know exactly how fast this is and let you know what you know this thing can do with some of the, the, the more modern games. The 850M, is about as fast as a 760M. It's really very similar, almost identical uh, in speed. And I've got a laptop that has a 760M in it, and that's the one I use for gaming on the road. Another thing they've done to sort of uh, you know push this 850M a little bit is they've installed GPU tweak, and they've given you a 5% overclock, bringing it to 1.17 gigahertz. Uh, you do have GPU tweak running in the background, and that uses like four or five megabytes of of RAM, so it's it's no big deal because you've got eight gigabytes right here. So the best thing about this, really, in my opinion, uh, other than the build quality, which is why we took it up on the mountain, but you know, it's really nice build quality. It's 1.1 inch thick. Um, you know, it's it's not too heavy. The thing that I like about this the most is the screen. The display is an IPS 15.6 inch matte display. So we've got, you know, it's full HD. And before we had the TN panels and they had this color shift that was just out of control. If you move the the, the you know the screen up or down, or you look at it from the sides really really difficult to see this one i can set it on a table i can see it from almost any angle i don't have to sit there and, and fool around with repositioning the, the the back of the screen or whatever um so it's just really easy to see it looks a lot better and um i i'm all for ips displays tn panels can go away i'm okay with you know slightly higher response times and all that it's totally fine ips is so much better so again thanks to asus for doing that the other thing that's really interesting about this is they put a lot of focus into audio. Um, they've got something called the Sonic Master. Now there's large speakers on the bottom and they have larger resonance chambers than what you're gonna see on other laptops. But still, it sounds to me like a laptop. You, you know, you put on music or whatever and you're like, oh, you're listening to a laptop. So they've given us, I guess the Sonic Master is what it's called, but it's a separate subwoofer. It looks kind of like a, a lens from a camera or something. You plug it in to a special eighth inch port and then you have a much, much fuller sound. Um, in fact, it's uh, about as good as some desktop options I've seen out there. I mean, it's not going to replace headphones or a, you know, a nice set of desktop speakers or anything like that. But for a laptop, with the addition of the uh, Sonic Master little you know, portable subwoofer, it's the best experience I've had with audio uh, on a laptop, period. There's also an ROG Audio Wizard, and that has some software tools. It's got several different presets that you can choose, choose from, uh, or you can go in there and, and, and tweak it yourself. I'm more for hardware than, than software, uh, but this is professionally configured software stuff for different, you know, tasks or different, you know, gaming and all that sort of thing. We've got a brushed aluminum on the back. In my opinion, looks pretty nice, but it's up to you because that's subjective. Uh, red logo, red trim around the sides. Aluminum here uh, behind the, the chiclet keys and where your wrist is going to go. Uh, touchpad was very responsive, uh, does support the gestures and that sort of thing. Um, I found it very easy to scroll with the touchpad, and I'm not a touchpad guy. I carry a mouse pretty much in my pocket or my backpack all the time, so I didn't use it that much. Uh, but I also want to note that while typing, um, my, my thumb, like once, made the scroll start moving up and down on accident. But other than that, I didn't really have much problem at all uh, with false clicks or false touches on the touchpad. You'll also notice that we have backlit keys on this, and there are three different levels of luminosity, and you can control that just by using the function keys and... Uh, you know, you'll see up there on the F keys, you've got functions for all kinds of different things, for the brightness, for the audio, uh, and all that stuff that's typically on a laptop. Now, on one side you have the power button, and on the other side you have a, a button that's just kind of hanging out up there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, press that button and show you what it does. So here we are on the desktop. I'll go ahead and minimize that. By the way, the CPU is 2.5 gigahertz, but it will turbo up to 3.5, so you get the power when you need it. Now, let me show you. I'm going to press that button. Asus Web Storage pops up. They give you five gigabytes of storage with this laptop, um, and that's one thing that's pre-installed on there. I'll show you the rest in just a second. But the strange thing is that they have that configured to go straight to the web storage. So uh, they're really, really wanting you to use their web storage. 
Now, let me show you what happens if you hold it down. And, and they're not really talking about this. This is kind of weird. If you hold the thing down for like eight seconds, I'm, I'm starting right now. I'm just holding it down, holding it down, holding it down. Instant key pops up. And now this becomes very useful because you can assign this to open up certain apps. You can assign it to do uh, lots of different things. Media player, <coughs> you know, there's a lot of different things. Or you can even search for an app to open and use the instant key. Instant key is a very interesting thing here. Uh, and there's a lot of different functions that you guys can play around with. But, I mean, you'd have to look in the manual to find out that that's even there. And when you first press it, it comes up straight away with, with the web storage. I think the guys at Asus... Uh, should give you guys the choice. And the first time you press that, it should open up, uh, you know, the, the, the um, Instant Key program, ask you what you want to do, and then if you wanted to use web storage, use it for that. So I could see where they're going there with wanting to push web storage, though, so I guess we, f we can forgive them. I'm not sure if I can forgive them for putting um, some, some strange things on here. Uh, there's McAfee, of course, and um, the McAfee does come with a free period. You can use it if you want. I uh, decided to remove it. In fact, I installed PC Decrampifier and, uh, you know, removed a few things. Um, there's also some, like, Wild Tangent Games or Tangent Games. I don't remember what it was. or some of that. I know Linus removed his as well. Uh, I'm all for removing that kind of junk. I left a lot of the Asus programs on here. Some of them I wasn't exactly sure what they would do, so I didn't want to take them off. I may experiment with, you know, removing some of them. Uh, but here you can see that uh, there's not a lot going on in the background, and there's not uh, an extreme amount of things starting with the computer. Uh, sometimes a lot of laptops when you get them they're starting so many things with the computer it's like you get it and you're like man i need a new laptop because this is so slow so this one is not that bad and plus it's already fast um some other weirdnesses let's talk about i also found it a bit weird that they only included one stick uh, of memory now it's an eight gigabyte stick of memory but that means it's running in single channel instead of dual channel uh i mean four gigabyte so dims are about the same price as an eight gigabyte i think if you get two of those so I don't think it would have done much to the price. Now you have the option to add more RAM, but I usually recommend getting the same RAM. It's a Samsung module that's in this model. So this laptop comes with a free trip to the hardware store so you can buy a Torx screwdriver. I know some of you have one, but it's a number five. And just gonna go around and take off all the screws. After that, you just need something to pry it open, like this or a flathead screwdriver. And it comes off pretty easily, just snaps off. Put that aside. Here's what we're looking at on the insides. There's your battery pack. Over here's your hard drive. There's the DVD writer. That's the wireless. Two fans here with copper heat pipes going to both the GPU and the CPU right here. And then we have the one stick of uh, DDR3. Now, as far as the battery life goes, it's actually pretty good. You get over three hours with just general use, using the computer, web browsing, goofing off watching videos, that sort of thing, because that uses the onboard Intel. If you activate the GeForce, well, you're going to get about about an hour. We got 64 minutes playing Doom on this uh, using the GeForce, because we were using a patch for Doom to use OpenGL, so that was using the GeForce GTX uh, 850M. So we got about 64 minutes gaming uh, in Doom 1 with the OpenGL. So, all right, let's talk about some benchmarks on this and tell you guys exactly how fast uh, this is in games. We ran the Valley benchmark, 1080p, Extreme HD, didn't really work out for us. Uh, we were doing DirectX 10 as well, 13.7 frames per second. So um, that's uh, not so hot. Metro Last Light running at 1600 by 900, uh, DirectX 10, not DirectX 11, uh, 4x entropy filtering, uh, SSAA turned on, no physics because that killed the frame rate. We averaged 22.57. So that game you have to really run on medium. Crisis 3. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna run this at a playable resolution to show you guys how this is gonna work on your machine. I had to set the quality, overall quality level to medium, run it at 1600 by 900, uh, no anti-aliasing, no filters, uh, no MSAA, nothing like that. But we were able to run 8X uh, anisotropic filtering. And with that, we were able to achieve 36.52 frames per second. So that's very playable. We also benchmark this at an extremely taxing point of the game. Some people always mention like, hey, your crisis benchmarks are low. Well, I, I benchmark this at a really taxing point of the game so you know that it's you know not going to dip. It dipped to 29 once. So, All right, Bioshock Infinite at DirectX 11 at the max settings. I wanted to see what this could do because Bioshock Infinite's usually, uh, you know, it looks good, but it usually runs really well. Uh, on DirectX 11 maxed out 26.72 frames per second. If you turn it down to DirectX 10 mode and uh, max it out still, you can get 42.4 frames per second. 
uh, pretty playable. I would say this is a gaming laptop to play on medium resolutions uh, or medium settings and resolutions, sometimes 1080p, but more than likely you'll be playing at 720p or 1600 by 900. If you're playing indie games and that sort of thing, you can play all day maxed out with most, uh, you know, I guess, I guess most indie games, most side scrollers, most, um, you know, top down games, Hotline Miami is not gonna have any problems with this. And then also older games. So uh, you can do a lot with this. My last gripe with this is the hard drive. Uh, coming from an SSD on my other laptop, this one felt really slow and I really wish that they would have given us some option to install uh, an SSD. It's got a DVD writer on the side. I don't need that. I don't know if you guys need that, but I would much rather have uh, an option for an SSD, an M.2, even an M SATA from like last generation, whatever. Just give me an option for a faster hard drive and I'll be much happier. 750 gigabytes is a good way to go for price and also a really good way to go for a gaming laptop. You want the storage. And also the SSDs do not help you that much uh, in games other than when, with your load times. Once you're in the game, the SSD is not going to really affect the gameplay all that much. Uh, but just, you know, general use in Windows and that sort of thing would have really been nice to have it. Uh, the 4710 is great for productivity. You know, Photoshop and Premiere and that sort of thing run great on this. So, all in all, uh, there's a couple things I would like to see, you know, changed, but it would raise the price. Uh, this fits in right, you know, at the, at the mid the mid range. It's not the, the top of the line and it's not the bottom of the line. Uh, the price to performance ratio is also somewhere in the middle. You can get like a really cheap CPU with like the same graphics card and gets similar, not quite as good a performance in games. Uh, but you add on that 880M and you're talking a huge price hike. So uh, it fits in nicely in the marketplace. Last thing I want to do is tell you about all the ports on this. All right, sitting in front of the laptop on the left side, we have the uh, AC power plug. Then we have the uh, quarter inch jack for your subwoofer uh, Ethernet port. Then we have HDMI and display port, and this does support 4K monitors. We did test that at uh, 30 hertz. Uh, that's the only monitor we have with 30 hertz. We have two USB 3.0, and then we have our um, microphone head headphone combo port over there. The right hand side, we have an SD card reader, and then we have another USB 3 port. And then we have that DVD ROM drive that I wish we could uh, remove and replace with a hard drive. I know some of you guys still need DVD ROM drives and you watch movies and that sort of thing, but I think um, I would rather carry a, a, a portable DVD ROM drive if I need one because I could just put most of the stuff these days, like movies and things, onto a flash drive and be happy. So um, yeah, that's the, that's the my biggest gripe is the, the DVD ROM drive. Other than that, amazing screen, amazing build quality, uh, and and good for the money. All right, since this thing is a world record holding laptop that's been to the top of the mountain, that's competed in a Doom tournament to break, you know, the world record for high stress rail land party, we thought it would be appropriate to give it to somebody in the community. So. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give this laptop away, and it's also signed by just about everybody that was there. So we've got a lot of signatures on the back of this thing. Some funny ones. I'm not going to... Well, I guess, I guess you guys are seeing it on the screen right now. But, all right, here's what I want you guys to do. Click on the link on the screen. Go to the website. Uh, that's what happens when you click on the link. It takes you over there. And then I want you guys to name something that's rarely seen in a gaming laptop that you'd like to see in a gaming laptop. Maybe it's a feature, a function anything. It can be anything that you would love to see in a gaming laptop, but you hardly ever see it. So go over there, post, you know, your comment or whatever, and it has to be an applicable comment or else I'm not going to choose you as the winner. And then we will randomly choose from the valid entries and give away this, uh, this gaming laptop. And you guys can hold a piece of history and also have a nice fast gaming laptop. How's that? It's amazing. That's how it is.